Second scrimmage is on deck, and I got my eye on a few things. In the world full of podcasts, he's the undisputed heavyweight champion of hot takes, an Auburn sports homer, master of the bug, and message board legend. Get your buttons buttoned and your hats flattened because the Top Button Podcast is about to kick off, and you don't want to miss your courtside seat. Now, here's your host, Charlie Five. Yes, sir. We are back. It's another episode of the Top Button Podcast. I'm your host, Kyle Rush, a.k.a. Charlie Five, and we are ready to get it after it, get into it. Uh, talk about this scrimmage that's on deck. Uh, Auburn's got a second scrimmage of the season right ahead. Uh, it'll be on Saturday, Saturday evening. I think they're going to go under the lights, get a little um, nighttime uh, atmosphere action uh, going on. What are we looking for? What are the big jumps that we should see uh, from last scrimmage? Clean that stuff up this week, and then what we're moving for, uh, moving on, what we'll hear from the scrimmage. It's going to be a closed scrimmage, uh, so there's not going to be any media there. So you're going to have to get creative. We're going to have to get creative a little bit with how we get uh, glean some intel, get some uh, get some nuggets here or there. But uh, we got some stuff over at the barn that we're working on. We should be able to give you some, still give you some pretty good coverage. Uh, and then obviously we'll break it down uh, after the fact and, and talk about what happened and, you know, the storylines coming out of it. So, uh, but what are we looking for? What are we, what we had a scrimmage last Saturday. Uh, it was in front of a lot of people. There was a lot of uh, on to victory, um, on to victory members there, uh, a lot of media there. So it was a little bit of an A day kind of atmosphere, a little bit of vanilla, uh, not a, not a ton. I feel like you know, you had some big plays. Obviously, you had the Malcolm Simmons breakout. But overall, I think it was just one of those, hey, we want to get a scrimmage. We want to get a scrimmage in. Uh, we got to do it in front of some, you know, in front of some fans. We got to do it in front of some eyes. So let's just try not to get hurt and let's not give away too much. Let's work on some of the things we're working on. This one's going to be a little bit more, uh, a little bit more uh, realistic, I think. When, when, when you when you close the scrimmage, you can do a little bit more. You can show a little bit more, work on a little bit more because you're not going to have a lot of eyes on the things that you're working on. And there's a, there's some things I think that you maybe ha- haven't talked about in the public, haven't talked that you got to clean up that you want to. This is a good opportunity uh, to do that. But there's three things in particular that I'm looking at that this scrimmage is big for that that I want to see, I want to hear coming out of it. So the first thing, obviously, is quarterbacks. Okay. I feel like all four quarterbacks had pretty good, pretty solid scrimmages uh, in their own way uh, last Saturday. So uh, from what I understand, this week has been one of the best offensive weeks of practice that Auburn's had in quite a while, t- spanning multiple coaching, uh, mo- multiple coaching staff. So uh, they, they, it seems like they're, they're continuing to sort of get big explosive plays during practice uh, last uh, that though we had some big explosive plays in the last scrimmage and all quarterbacks again had a little bit of success in their own way let's start with the man uh, up at the top Peyton Thorne was very efficient in the last scrimmage okay third like we said 13 and 20 for around 100 yards very accurate uh, it had a couple of throwaways, so really that that completion percentage was even higher uh, in reality so uh, so can he continue to uh, progress? Can he continue to hit that second element of being able to push the ball down the field? From everything we hear in practice, they light it up. It, well, they throw it deep. You hear story after story, Cam Coleman catching deep touchdowns. I think yesterday uh, in practice, he had two uh, deep touchdowns, so to, uh, two deep, deep touchdowns So in, in the 11-on-11 work. So can Thorne – get to the point where he's able to not only hit the check downs, which from what I understand, going through the progressions, being able to find the check down, knowing where it is in this offense, stuff like that, he's doing really well at. But can he can you get to the point where we can push it down the field uh, a little bit more consistency, a little bit more consistent? I think that's always been sort of the maybe if there's an Achilles heel uh, a weakness there, at least last year, that's where it was. But obviously now he's got a little bit more weapons. He's able to, uh, you know, just put the ball in an area and those guys can go up and get it. Again, all you hear is how the most consistent player in camp, in camp it seems like, has been Cam Coleman. So can Thorne be able to take advantage of that? 
I, I don't think he was really allowed to in the last scrimmage. I think you'll hear a little bit more. Let's be a little bit more aggressive. Let's push the ball down the field. Thorne, I think that's one element I'd love to see him kind of continue to go and continue to grow. The vertical passing game, push that ball down the field, get in those 50-50 situations, rip that ball up the seam, uh, those type things. We know he can make all the short stuff and, and, and do that. Let's get vertical. Get vertical, baby. Throw it down the field. Let's light the scoreboard up. I want to hear. I want to hear that coming out of the scrimmage. I think that's the next step to that. That's the that's the key. Being able to take the top off the defense. That's what I want to see out of my out of my man Thorn. Uh, if that's your starting quarterback, you got to be able to light it up. Step down number two, Hank. Dude's just Mister Consistency. I, I think yesterday, uh, from what I understand, he only threw one incompletion. Uh, you know, uh, in in the eleven on eleven work, it seems like he's he's Mister Consistency when he runs with the you know runs with his group, uh, and I think that's what you got to have. So can he continue to uh, can he continue to be consistent, but also limit uh, some of the mistakes? I think he gets he gets to where uh, he makes quick decisions. He gets the ball out. But sometimes that can lead to an interception. I think he had the only interception of the scrimmage last Saturday. Clean that stuff up. But Hank, uh, you know, all he's got it, all Hank's really got to do is just hang in there and be patient because it seems like it's inevitable that, that he's going to be the guy eventually. It, it really does. He's he's ever since he's been here, he's sort of been, you know, continually gotten better and better. And now it seems like he's very, he's very, very consistent. He's got the tools to be able to push the ball down the field uh, and be able to be explosive. The run part, the the, the athleticism and, and the running part of it is obviously his big weakness, but where he is weak there, he's got strengths in other places, uh, you know, just like being fearless, being able to rip balls into tight windows. Uh, so can he continue to just it really just kind of stay status quo. Just can, can he can can he continue to stay consistent and then limit just those little little turnover mistakes? Hey, I get it, man. I get it. He's he's mega confident. He feels like he can make every throw, and and that's a big deal. Uh, but also, you you still got to be safe at times and be smart at times. Not that he's not smart, but sometimes the the idea that I can fit that ball in or I, I can get that ball there. Uh, can get him in trouble at times. So can he stay consi- continue to stay consistent, continue to complete passes at a high clip, uh, and, and just stay right there, continue to push Peyton, continue to push Peyton, continue to make this offense better, and be right there because you never know uh, when it's his time. So I want, that's what I want to hear. C- continue to hear that consistency out of Hank as, you, as your number two guy. Holden, all, all you hear from Holden is just how electric his arm is uh, at, at times. I think he's just got to get uh, – Holden's just got to continue to, you know, continue to work. I, he's He's been patient. Uh, there's been times where you're, you're shocked that he's, he hasn't portaled because he's been here. This is his – you know, he's been here longer than anybody. He's the, the longest tenured quarterback on campus, he, you know, even counting uh, Peyton Thorne, who's – been the longest tenured quarterback, but Holden's uh, the longest tenured quarterback on campus. So – um, I think Holden's just got to continue to make plays. Uh, do what you do. What he did in the scrimmage. Hey, he threw two touchdowns. You know, and they were both really good, uh, really good passes on the money to Bryce uh, Bryce Kane, and then to Malcolm Simmons over the middle. Just can absolutely sh- spin the ball right up the middle uh, on a rope for twenty five ish yards, and then let Malcolm Simmons take it to the house. So uh, Holden's got. Just continue to build, continue to make big plays and limit mistakes and work on accuracy. I think at times accuracy, he gets he make it, may mess him up a little bit, but uh just stuff like that, holding great, great person to have as your, you know, right now as your two B or third quarterback. I think it's uh, you you're in you're in happy if if holding Garner is your number three quarterback. And then Walker. Man, Walker has all the physical tools and, and he's another one. He's another one that you hear that makes wow plays uh, with his arm. You know, the throws that he can make uh, at times, you just got to continue to, to, you got to continue, got to continue to work so that the game starts to slow down a little bit so that when you make those reads, uh, you're not making them too fast. The, 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 your eyes aren't big, you know, you're, you're just sort of reacting versus, 
uh, versus sort of your head, your wheels spinning too fast. And that's where he is, and that's understandable. Okay, where he's come from, from where he is now, the scrimmage, the stat, the the stat line looks at worse than it actually was. His completion percentage was low, but as he's he's also throwing to like a lot of walk on wide receivers that, uh, and he was throwing some darts that that were either dropped or one on one situations, 50 50 situations that your guy just doesn't have quite the ability that some of the starters would have been able to make that play. So. I think Walker just just keep keep like submersing yourself in the playbook, keep learning and, and keep going and, and not get discouraged. Yeah, you got a couple of guys in front of you, but man, you have the highest ceiling out of really anybody in the room. When you got the running ability and the and the big arm, just just stay with it, keep progressing, uh, keep making plays, uh, and, and eventually he's gonna get there. So in the scrimmage, I'd love to see him maybe tighten up that completion percentage instead of trying to make the home run throw. Hey, sometimes let's just let's just get a completion. Let's just get the chains moving. Let's just dump it out there three or four yards. Let's get let's keep the chains moving. I think at times that would be that would help him a, a lot, sort of gain that rhythm because there was a time in the scrimmage last week where once he completed two or three passes, he started to get in rhythm. And then it's ripping darts everywhere, throwing lasers in tight windows. Uh, the best pass of the day, in my opinion, he dropped the dime uh, on a uh, go route right in the basket for Dylan Gentry, and, and unfortunately he dropped it. But, but yeah, uh, let's tighten up. Let's Instead of making the home run on every play, let's just keep the chains moving. I think that's something big that I'd like to hear out of the scrimmage uh, coming from Walker White. So quarterbacks obviously big. There's there's little things that each one of them can do that I hope we hear out of the scrimmage that that helps kind of polish them and, and move them a little bit forward uh, in their progression headed towards the headed towards the season. So switching gears, uh, we talked about defensive line. We've talked about depth. The three you want if you want to call the edge, I'm calling the edge a defensive lineman in this exercise. Okay, so. Three out of your four defensive line uh, positions are pretty much set. Okay, you got your edge guys, uh, McLeod and Crawford. Those guys are going to be a one-two punch. You got Keldrick Falk, who is a he's going to be there unless he's injured. You're not going to be able to take that guy off the field. He may take a couple of snaps off to get subbed in, subbed out with like an Amaris Williams or somebody like that. But for the most part, Keldrick Falk, you're going to have to tase him, tranquilize him, do something to get him off the field because he's he's there. Uh, and then you got Jason Jones and Isaiah Rakes. Those two guys uh, are, are battling for one and two. You feel very confident there. That fourth defensive line, uh, that fourth defensive line position, it's been somewhat up in the air, okay? You, you don't really know exactly who stands out. Uh, you don't really know who that guy is. You got gauge keys. You've heard Malik Blockton in there on – on like uh, dime packages. You've heard about him him getting some action. You've heard about TJ Lindsay getting some action. But the guy that I'm hearing is really starting to emerge as not only just being a uh, the starter, but maybe being a, a, even more of a factor on this defensive line, and that's Philip Bleedy, the, the late addition uh, transfer. From what I understand, this guy is – the, the the exact quote I'm trying to remember the exact quote was somewhat like he has a he is a very Marcus Harris like defensive lineman very disruptive he's he's been making a lot of tackles for losses uh, and he's sort of solid I think he sort of solidified himself as being that number four defensive lineman you know that fourth defensive lineman that defensive end uh, in in the you know on this defensive front and. If that if that's the case, uh, if you can give me a little bit, if you can give me eighty percent of, or hey, I'll take seventy percent of Marcus Harris on the defensive line with the other guys that you have around you this year and the depth behind them. Got that? That's a that's going to be a that's going to be a nasty defensive line. I've, I've been hearing some whispers that a lot of people think this defensive line could be the strength end up being one of the strengths of the whole team uh, as far as position groups go, uh, which is something that you, what's funny is you go into the offseason thinking that's going to be the biggest hole 
that's going to be the biggest, you know, that's going to be the biggest question mark on the next season. But with the, some of the additions that you've added and now the emergence of Philip Bleedy, this could be the best position group on the team. Uh, and, and, hey, you know how I feel about all defensive linemen. If, if we can get a nasty defensive lineman, uh, a nasty D-line in there, mixing it up and, and getting the crowd uh, getting the crowd rowdy, making tackles for losses, things like that, yeah, I, I can't be any happier. But that fourth defensive lineman, I think that gets solidified this weekend. Uh, and I think that guy's going to be Philip Bleedy. I think uh, it seems like he's really stepped his game up and he is he is explosive uh, and he's motivated too. I mean, guys married, got kids. I mean, he's a, or got a kid. He's he's got to make it happen. And and you know sometimes sometimes that type of stuff can uh, really fire you up and really get you uh, get you motivated. So uh, I, I Philip Bleedy is the guy I'm watching as that fourth defensive lineman. I want to hear uh, how that shakes out uh, from the from the scrimmage, and I think it's going to be th- something to watch because. Uh, that's something that's not really talked about, not been talked about a ton. I think Philip Bleedy uh, is your fourth guy, fourth defensive lineman. I think he's the guy that's going to be running out there first, and it's not going to be just a, uh, a a roster spot. This dude's a factor. This guy's going to be a factor. So uh, let's see what happens. Uh, I'd love to love to hear more about what happens there uh, from the scrimmage. And then the last thing we talked about the depth, and, and we talked about. Um, the talent level, young talent level uh, in the defensive backfield. You've got some, you've got some uh, veterans, uh, and then you mixing in. You're mixing in some some inexperienced but very talented kids. And what I'm hearing is the more uh, the more I hear about the defensive backfield and the, and the thing that we want to that we want to sort of uh, hear a progression in is consistency. You know, you'll see a wow play, uh, and then you'll have a busted coverage. Uh, so the young DBs, what do we, what type of what can we what can we do to get a little bit more consistent in the backfield? I think that's just experience. And hey, let's not forget you signed four electric freshman wide receivers too. So they're going against some really good dudes. So it's it's not surprising that that every so often you're going to have a bust uh, in coverage when you got guys when you're trying to cover a dude like Malcolm Simmons. Uh, who it can can score from anywhere on the field, or Perry Thompson on the outside, who if you don't watch out, not only uh, could you get blown by, but he could just moss you, and he's 223 pounds, and there's not a ton you can do at 180 pounds, 185 pounds. You just got to, you know, eat it because, because he's going to jump on your head and make a play. So – they're they're getting they have the opportunity to continue to get better because we talked about it yesterday. Iron sharpens iron. Uh, one you know talent on talent it, it is how development happens. Uh, develop uh, depth is is ninety percent of uh, competition is ninety percent of development. So so it's understandable that you could have some in, some inconsistencies there, but I think that's something that you. have you know, once those, once you go past those, those starters, once you go past those starters, there's zero, hardly any experience. Okay. So that is sort of scary because a rolled ankle, a, uh, you know, a hurt shoulder, something like that, even if it's just a quick, a quick uh, out and back in, even if it's just a few plays that they got to take off, the guy that's coming in does not have much game experience at all. So we got to get a little bit more consistent out of the young defensive backfield. So, I think that's something. I hope they get a lot of reps. I hope they get a lot of. I hope your J. I hope J. C. Hart gets a lot of get, gets a lot of run. I hope, um, you know, I hope uh, Dad Gummit and uh, Kite Antonio or yeah, Kite. I hope he gets a lot of uh, run because he's going to be a, a factor that they're both battling for that first DB off the bench uh, type thing. And then Keontae Scott's been. It, I haven't really heard much about him being inconsistent. I just have not heard much about him being able to play with a little bit of a hammy holding him out. I'd love to hear a little bit more about him being able to, because he is switching from inside to outside and, and the, the, the uh, bowl game didn't particularly go well. So I want to hear a little bit more about him and his development. But the, the big thing about what you want to see in the scrimmage, I think is young DBs making plays, make being a little bit more consistent uh, I think that's another big uh, storyline to watch. Another small storyline, obviously, I want to be able to. I, I want to see us be able to run the ball. I mean, I'm 
if I'm nervous about anything, is that uh, being able to run the ball because the the two public times we've been able to see stuff uh, hadn't been great. So I want to see, I want to hear a little bit. Hey, Auburn was able to you know move the chains a little bit, uh, being able to get a little bit of push. They won some, they lost some, but hey, we're going to be all right. We're, Jarquez breaks off a twenty yard run. Uh, Cobb has a has a long run or something like that. Like that, that's the kind of stuff you want to hear versus this little two three yards in a cloud of dust that we've been seeing out of the running game. So close scrimmage, uh, no no media, not a lot of information. If you want to have some information, if you want to stay, <clears throat> if you want to stay in the in the loop, if you want to know uh, what's going on, I would suggest you join the barn uh, the barnauburn.com. I mean, for one dollar. For one dollar for the first month, uh, you're going to be able to have a little bit of scoop on what ha- what goes down uh, over the weekend. Uh, we're going to have some boots on the ground. We're going to have some eyes in the sky, uh, and we'll be able to kind of give you a little bit of an idea, paint a little bit of a, pic- of a picture of what goes on in this scrimmage. Hey, this is one of this is one of the more important scrimmages. This is probably the one of the more important practices of the football the the, the fall camp. Because typically this is where a lot of times position battles are won. I don't know how many are up for grabs uh, per se, but typically this is where position battles are won. Okay, because next week is next week you you have a, a, a another little bit of a week of, of just like fall camp cleanup from the scrimmage, and then the next week you're game planning, baby. It's game week, so that go you you go from fall camp mode into game prep mode uh, leading up to. Uh, the kickoff of the uh, of the 2024 season. So definitely got to check out the barn, auburn.com. Uh, subscribe today, $1 again for the first month. Try it, see what you think. Uh, and, and then uh, obviously it's $9.95 uh, after that. So definitely check that out. If you like this video, like it. If you like this channel, subscribe to it. Hit that alert bell. You never know when we're going to go live talking about could be a commit, uh, maybe go live again Sunday night and recap the scrimmage. We'll uh, we'll let you know on that. Uh, and then follow me on Twitter, the underscore Charlie underscore five. And, and we're going to get after it again. Uh, this is Friday, so we're probably going to see you Sunday night, and then we're going to get after it again next week and break it down as we inch closer to this football season. Uh, really appreciate it, guys. Thanks for listening. Another episode of the Top Button Podcast. Stay button. for listening and drive home safely.